Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We are glad that you're here today as we gather together to uh, worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You will hear the gospel message uh, powerfully and uh, marvelously through our choir and instrumentalists today under the direction of Eric, and we're just glad that you're here uh, to join in this time of worship and praise. Uh, some announcements, and that's great. Keep that right there because I forgot to welcome not only you, but uh, those who are uh, listening to us on the radio, those who are watching us on Facebook Live, and those who will catch us a little later this afternoon on YouTube. Uh, we are glad that you are here, no matter where that may be, that have joined us today. Um, if there are any prayer requests that you have, uh, you have prayer cards in the pew racks in front of you. Uh, you can place those uh, in, the, uh, in the offering plates. Um, um, you can always email Patty May at the email address that you see there. Call the office, uh, relay that your prayer request to uh, Megan or myself. If, you, if that prayer request is to be confidential, please mark it or tell us as such. And just the prayer team uh, itself will, will uh, lift those up in prayer. Otherwise, the, that prayer request will appear uh, um, in our bulletin as well. Uh, Christmas Eve candlelight service, uh, 5.30 in the evening, December 24th. Who would have thunk it? But there it is. Uh, we invite you to come and just join us in this special time as we celebrate the coming of the Christ child in our Christmas Eve service at 5.30. Uh, let's see. Oh. Um, we've been uh, talking to you about the, uh, our mission trip to Guatemala. That's coming up. This is the... Uh, uh, Gomez Kuma family, and this uh, the uh, hang on, let me get my arms out. You'll see the information in the back of your bulletin. Um, uh, this Louise, uh, your lady Jordan, uh, Yasinia, um, and uh, Jocelyn, Joseph, I'm sorry, Josephina. Um, this is the family for which we'll build. Um, a house just like that, with um, um, the house with um, bathroom facilities and uh, a new stove that will, um, uh, it's very economical and very, um, very good. It's vented and it's uh, so they don't get smoke and all that kind of things in your lungs. Um, this church, Pikeville United Methodist Church, made all this possible. And uh, so we just wanted to be able to let you know and kind of see uh, the family. And <clears throat> outside on the, uh, on the table, outside in the uh, gathering area, uh, there is a cross and a, a wheel of um, mark, marks lots, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that, uh, it's for those that, um, uh, of our church that um, would just like to sign their names on it who supported uh, the mission, whether it's through your financial giving or your prayers, and that that cross will ultimately go to the uh, Kuma family, and so they can hang it up, and then they'll have your name uh, on the cross. Uh, it's just those who have uh, supported them and uh, kept them in prayer, and so at, at the end of the service, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, let's see. Ah. There's a attendance uh, record. If you will, it's on the um, the insides of the uh, of the pews. Each one. If that first person will bite the bullet and sign that, just put your name on it and just pass it along. And as you do, you can say thank you for signing this to your neighbor and just keep that going so everyone signs. It helps us to kind of keep track of who's here and who's not, and so we don't want to miss people. And so if you're new, that's fine. Uh, put, a, put your name on there. And, uh, but if you'll do that for us this morning uh, during the announcement time, that will help a great deal. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you uh, personally, uh, the people of uh, Pikeville United Methodist Church, for your gracious words and cards and gifts uh, for pastor appreciation. Um, it means so much to Jennifer and I, and um, I'm 
so thrilled that when, whenever something like that was addressed to us, uh, it was both, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Guy and Jennifer, and Jennifer's a huge part of, uh, and always has been, in a ministry from church to church. So I just thank you uh, for, uh, um, for honoring her that way. And, um, and she's glad because, you know, she can split the money with me, so. <laughs> That's what she thinks. But anyway, um, let's see. Yeah, just uh, also in your bulletin, United Women of Faith on January 16th at 6 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Um, all ladies are invited to attend. They'll be their meeting there. And the flowers on the altar are dedicated to the glory of God in honor of Robert, Shannon, and Milo Daniels for their faithfulness in helping with the worship service every Sunday. And absolutely, they do. Yeah. <clears throat> I was up in the uh, balcony earlier this morning, and Milo, uh, and what is, is Milo th three yet? I'm not even, I'm terrible at ages. Three in March. Three in March. Okay, I was, I was close. That never happens. But anyway, <clears throat> Milo has this kind of rubbery unicorn up there that he hops on, bounces on, and I thought, we, everybody needs one because that is a great stress reliever. I mean, <laughs> he bounced on that thing a couple times, and it's just all this smiles, and I thought, man, we got to find out where y'all got those, but but we absolutely do appreciate uh, your faithfulness and uh, running the sound and the Facebook and the, the slides uh, each and every week, both services, and so we thank you. Um, last thing, last item, at the end of the service, um, we need to for our. Uh, uh, Genesis uh, Children's Play, that'll be Tuesday at 6.30. Is that right, D-Man? Tuesday at 6.30, so if, that's a great uh, experience to come and, and, and see that. So 6.30 on Tuesday evening, our Genesis Kids, our preschool, uh, will have their Christmas play, and so we invite you to come to that. But in order for them to do that well, the uh, Advent um, wreath display and this pulpit at the, after the service concludes, it needs to be moved like over here so the children have room and can do their thing. So if, um, if we can have a, a couple of volunteers to do that, and I'll be glad to help by you know, volunteering Jennifer to come and, and help you with that. <laughs> but um, it, would, it would just help us get, or help the kids uh, get that out of the way so they can do uh, their Christmas play. So once again, uh, we are glad that you are with us this morning. And uh, I wanted to invite the, um, the Justice family who will come and will light our uh, Advent candle. Today, we relight the candle of hope. And now, we light the candle for the second Sunday in Advent. This is the candle of peace. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and is our peace. For a child has been born to us a son is given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That was from the prophet Isaiah, and now from the prophet of John, from the Gospel of John. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give you that peace as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The word of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves and in our families be peacefully resolved. May there be peace in our cities and in our countries of the world. 
help us see the paths of peace in our lives, and then give to us the courage to follow them. Lord, help us remember that you only are the giver of lasting peace, and that you always, amen. As you remain standing, we invite you to join us in our affirmation of faith, uh, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And amen. If you would, step out and greet your neighbor in the name of the Lord this morning.
Christ. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh Lord, in this season of Advent, as we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us join our hearts in prayer and recommit to do the work that fosters peace in our homes, our communities, our nation, and around the world. Lord, in the midst of strife and chaos, we lift our voices for peace on earth. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For nations torn by division and wars, may your reconciling love prevail. O Lord, let there be peace on earth. In places where violence reigns, may the light of Christ dispel the darkness. O oh Lord, let there be peace on earth. Amidst the rumors of wars and the unsettling echoes of discord, may your calming presence be felt. O oh Lord, let there be peace on earth. As we anticipate the celebration of Christ's birth, fill our hearts with a deep longing for the peace that only you can bring. O oh Lord, let there be peace on earth. We pray for all those affected by strife, that they may experience the transforming power of your peace, even as we work for justice and righteousness. O oh Lord, let there be peace on earth. Lord, as we journey through this Advent season, may our collective prayers rise like incense before you. Hear our cries, O Lord, as we seek peace and pursue it. Grant us the peace that surpasses all understanding and help us to live it out wherever we go. We ask these things, O oh Lord, in the way our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ, taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
It is a season punctuated by the laughter of children and the excited whispers of anticipation, a season accompanied by ageless melodies proclaiming tidings of goodwill and peace on earth. It is a time to rejoice and celebrate the fulfillment of promises, the promise of a new day, of a new life, the promise of a Messiah, a newborn king. But it wasn't always that way. There was a time before this king arrived that God's chosen people, the children of Israel, <coughs> lived in a hopeless and dark world, a world of anguish and bondage, with little assurance of a bright tomorrow. But words of hope continued to be proclaimed by the prophets of the day. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. says that in the beginning the earth was without form and empty that a darkness enveloped everything but God said let there be light every, and it was good every good and perfect gift comes from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change it has been said that it is darkest just before dawn the people of Israel experienced the darkest of long nights. As they awaited the promised Messiah, they yearned for a king who, as King David had described, would rule out of reverence for God, one who would dawn on them like the morning light, like the sun shining forth on a cloudless morning. The prophet Isaiah offered hope for the dawning of that new day when this righteous king would arrive. The Lord himself will give you a sign. A young maiden will give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
this king would be a source of profound light and life to all people. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor the brightness of the moon your light by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your glory. This was the hope to which Israel clung as they awaited the dawning of a new and glorious morn, the arrival of the promised King of Heaven. The angel Gabriel was sent to Nazareth in Galilee to a young maiden named Mary. She was pledged in marriage to a man named Joseph. The angel told Mary that she had found favor with God and that she would conceive and give birth to the child that Isaiah had foretold hundreds of years before, the promised Messiah. How can this be? Mary asked the angel. Gabriel responded, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. This holy child shall be called the Son of God. In those days, a decree was issued by Caesar Augustus that a census was to be taken of the entire Roman world. Everyone was to return to their hometown to register. Joseph, to whom Mary was engaged, was from Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of King David. So he and Mary, who by then was great with child, made their way to Bethlehem. 
Sometimes light emerges from the most obscure of places, bringing hope and promise to the darkest and most unlikely of settings. That was God's plan as this trek to Bethlehem helped fulfill the, world, the words of the prophet Micah. You, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one who will be the ruler over Israel. So it was in God's perfect timing. The promise came. Love's pure light. The Messiah was born in the tiny village of Bethlehem. angelic promises, providential plans, all were being fulfilled on this single night as the holy child of Bethlehem, Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, was born. As John, the beloved disciple and gospel writer, describes it, the Word, meaning Jesus, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. In him was life. And that life was a light for all people. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The Bible records that there were shepherds living out in the fields near Bethlehem, keeping watch over their flocks at night. It was just an ordinary night with ordinary shepherds doing their ordinary thing. However, this night instantly became like no other night. As an angel of the Lord appeared to them with the glory of the Lord shining all around them, the shepherds were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among all people. marvelous, is it not? Glory be to God. Yes. Um, we continue our worship uh, through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. I invite the ushers to come forward at this time. And um, as you prepare uh, to give back to the Lord a portion of that with which he has blessed you, uh, I pray for God's blessings upon you this day.
Heavenly Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit uh, to pour out upon these gifts that have been given so that your kingdom might be expanded and furthered in us and through us to our church, to our community, and around the world for the good of all and the glory of your name. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Shepherds. Why shepherds? Why would God choose lowly shepherds to be the first recipients of the news that the long-awaited Messiah had arrived? Could it be that shepherds were most likely to give heed to such a message? Could it be that the shepherds just might drop what they were doing and head to Bethlehem to check out what had been just told to them? Could it be that shepherds could relate to this king whom they would find lying in a manger in a way that no one else could? Could it be that shepherds, these shepherds, would uniquely connect with the newborn Messiah who would one day call himself the Good Shepherd? When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen the baby, they spread the word about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what they heard the shepherds say.
praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. But Mary, the young, humble maiden mother of the Christ child, treasured up all these things as she pondered them in her heart. Prophets, angels, shepherds, a census calling them to the remote village of Bethlehem, and here in a lowly stable, a newborn child, her child, and yet not exactly her child, at least not in the usual manner. Into a dark and cold world, heaven's glorious light had shined in the most unlikely manner, in the most unlikely way, God had sent his very own to redeem the world, to provide life and life abundant. This was indeed a holy moment, a holy night.
celebrated the day when the eternal light of heaven would shine upon the world. After centuries of waiting, the day of the Messiah's birth had finally arrived. This was the Messiah who would one day call himself the light of the world, the one who claimed that those who followed him would never walk in darkness. This was the Messiah, the Savior, who would one day challenge his followers to be light in a world of darkness, to shine before others that they might see their good deeds and give praise to the Father in heaven. This Messiah, Jesus the Christ, has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He now reigns with his Father in heaven. But he will return to gather his children to live forevermore in a place where there will be no more night. There will be no need for the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will be the source of light. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you.
the more we can thank the people. So we just want to you to know how much we love you. are indeed um, fortunate and blessed to have uh, Dr. Eric Brefford uh, with us each week to lead our uh, ministries and music. And um, for the rest of you, for the narrators and the chancel choir and the organist and the pianist and the instrumentalists, uh, we are just so grateful uh, that you've blessed us with your God-given gifts and ushered us into the presence of God today. And my only question is, I mean, Eric's here every week. What are you all doing for the next 51 weeks? <laughs> we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. If you would uh, rise and we'll sing our uh, closing hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.